This morning on today's checklist, a look at how artificial intelligence is shaping the medical industry. Nearly 80% of U.S. healthcare organizations are already using AI, according to a recent report. So we're here to break it down, how it shapes our experiences as patients is board-certified colorectal and general surgeon, Dr. Cedric McFadden. Good morning, Good doctor. Good morning, Dylan. So AI in the medical space, how, what does that look like? Well, so Dylan, I grew up watching the Jetsons. And so in many ways, stepping into healthcare right now is like stepping into that future world mm. uh, where we're able to solve these really complex problems with just incredible efficiency. In rural areas, for example, um, local clinics, they're using AI-driven tools to help diagnose patients remotely. That means that patients are connecting with specialists without even needing to leave their community. That's a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, for many of us, uh, another example, example, uh, at some point you've had to go to the emergency room, right? And uh, what's the one dreaded thing about the emergency room is wait. the wait. <laughs> no one wants to wait. So hospitals are using AI to help predict the times that those hospitals, ERs, mm -hmm. are busiest. So they have enough nurses, they have enough techs to take care of you so you're waiting less. Mm -hmm. Also, when we create new medications, new therapies, they're using AI to help determine what types of conditions, what genetic makeups are going to be best served with those medications. It's really about getting faster access for patients to breakthrough therapies. Mm -hmm. Doc, in what other ways has AI helped, like, you know, transform patient access to care? Well, you're likely using AI now and you don't even know it. If you've scheduled a doctor's appointment, if you've done a telemedicine of visit, or even if you just inquired about a non-urgent health need, you've likely used an AI-based tool. Many of us are wearing these wearable devices that track our steps. You can check our, oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Check our steps our heart rate, and they give us real-time personalized feedback into things we can do different. The next thing, here's what's interesting. The feedback that you get is very different than the feedback I get. And that's really how AI is being used. If you're taking multiple medications, this is really important because you should try one of these apps potentially to help you manage when to take those medications, mm -hmm. what are the interactions of those medications that you take, and it really can make a big difference. There are so many apps you can use. If you have dizziness, you can just say, I have dizziness, it's gonna tell you what what are the causes of that dizziness? It may tell you what questions to ask your doctor, what are the red flags, and all the other things that you may not get from just searching a regular search bot. So you go to these, ch these search bots or chat bots yeah. and you're, you're interacting with them. What information should you avoid putting in inputting into that channel. Yeah, so that is, I think, probably one of the best questions right here because, you know, it's important to remember that AI is not HIPAA compliant. Right. Oh, so true. when you come to see Whatever me, when you come to see me, I have not only a moral and a professional obligation, but I have a legal obligation to protect your privacy. Okay. AI is not. So you really want to be careful about giving your full medical history, your full history of medication, because there can be inferences about your health mm -hmm. that you may not want people to know. Also, you want to avoid putting like your social security yeah. number, your medical record numbers and things. And just remember that AI is not replacing your doctor. Yeah. It's just another tool in the toolbox he's going to use or she's going to use to help take care of you. My takeaway is AI is not HIPAA compliant. It's not HIPAA <laughs> compliant. Not HIPAA yes. compliant. Yes. So now let's look into the future. Yeah. Where do you see AI going? Oh, the trajectory is amazing. Um, the, mass, the vast amount of data that AI can take in, they're diagnosing conditions like cancer and Alzheimer's even before symptoms are present, Jeez. years in advance. So they're looking at biopsy pathology reports, looking at CT scans, MRIs, and giving you faster input so that you can start treatment because the faster you get this information, the better your outputs are. Surgical advancements, I do robotic surgery, and patients walk in, they say, hey, are you gonna do this robotically? So they haven't been expecting it, right? Yeah. Uh, because they know that smaller incisions, quicker retu return of their normal life, mm -hmm. it's really important for them. And so it's not taking advance. It's, it's, it's not working independently of your doctor. Yeah. It's a part of what they use. And I think finally, more virtual care. As our population expands, as we have the question about do we have enough doctors to take care, this is going to be key. And I think the important key here is to make sure that it's equitable, mm -hmm. right? That people have access to it. What's the cost going to be? All those questions. And it, we have to put these safeguards in place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm living the Jetsons every day. Yeah. in healthcare. It's amazing stuff. Always comes back to the Jetsons. It's a lot less scary now when you, I hear you put it that way. It's so. a part of what we have already. Embrace it. Yes. Make it work with the safeguards. Unless you place. get stuck on that treadmill and then it's... <laughs> really bad. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or Click the link right here.